So what do we mean by these categories of universal, subversive, and ecclesial? Uh, and these categories are really kind of convenient and interesting ways of um, putting different broad approaches to ethical thinking and to theological ethics into some broad categories. And they're the categories that our textbook authors use. I like our textbook for using these categories. Um, although, you know, I do think they are a bit artificial. There are um, people who you might put in the universal camp who have subversive elements and ecclesial elements uh, and vice versa, right? All of these different sort of um, buckets or ways of thinking certainly can overlap. But just as a, as a framework, as a heuristic, a way of, of uh, putting it together, I think it's, it's somewhat helpful for us. So what do we mean by these categories? When we talk about universal ethics, the notion here is that there's some kind of higher norm that uh, is available to everyone in some sense and that is applicable to everyone. Available to everyone and applicable to everyone. Uh, and what we mean by that, by, by being available, is that all human beings who are sort of functioning properly, who are functioning rationally, or perhaps whose intuitions are working properly, are able to discern the, uh, the sources and are able to discern at least the basic principles of ethical reasoning and of what is required of them to live a good life. Um, and further, that those requirements, at least at some level, at least at some higher level, are going to be applicable to everyone. Um, and, and at least some of those requirements are going to transcend culture, are going to transcend uh, time, and other kinds of uh, uh, differences like that. The category of, of subversive ethics is going to be an ethical approach that uh, kind of methodologically and and philosophically is um, may, maybe we can even say ideologically is going to be committed to thinking about ethical issues first through the lens of people who have historically been marginalized. So we might say that um, the perspective of women or we might say the perspective of racial minorities, or we might say the perspective of the poor, uh, the perspective of the working class. All of these kinds of perspectives ought to be emphasized in ethical reasoning. And part of the background of that is the notion that historically universal approaches to ethics have been uh, put forward mostly by um, white male people in the Western world, beginning all the way from the, the roots of it in ancient Greece, which some of which we've, we've looked at with Plato and so on, all the way through um, Western Christendom, all the way through to the modern period. Um, and that, because of that, insights of other people, other voices have been marginalized, and um, we need to bring those voices to the fore. Uh, in a kind of Christian theological ethics context, the uh, subversive approach will also often emphasize the teachings of Jesus and the, emphasis, the historic emphasis of, um, of Scripture and of at least aspects of, of uh, Christian theology on um, concern for the poor and marginalized. The third category uh, on this list are ecclesial ethics. And uh, by ecclesial ethics, our textbook authors mean to suggest that there are, are some ethicists working and writing today, some Christian theologians and thinkers working and writing today, who are going to say that the, the real focus of Christian theological ethics isn't so much how the world ought to live, isn't so much how, say, you know, a nation state should be structured, as it is about how Christians within the church ought to live and relate to the world. So the locus of ethical thinking is the revelation of God in Christ in and to and through the church. Uh, now, ecclesial ethics doesn't necessarily mean that we're 
only inward looking and we're only talking about how Christians within the church should relate to each other because ecclesial ethics um, will have a missional component and a question about how the church as it is living in the world ought to look out to the world but the emphasis is going to be a bit different and the primary focus um, of kind of ethical exhortation and reflection will first be on on ourselves uh, and on how we are constituting ourselves as God's people and not first on how other people in the world uh, necessarily ought to be living. So I hope you can see that you know there are some differences in emphasis between all of these approaches um, but on the other hand there are some similarities because each of these approaches is seeking to get at what it does mean to live a good life and what God's purposes are in and for the world and all of these approaches are gathering trying to gather together their different nodes of the web of theological ethics that we looked at last week these questions about nature and grace and law and discipleship and uh, church and eschaton right all of these kinds of things are, are all implicated in each one of these approaches and as I said there are uh, thinkers who overlap between them. I think, you know, my comments here from my own perspective, I uh, hope you're getting a little bit of a sense and we'll, you'll probably see it throughout the sem semester. You know, I think each of these perspectives has merits. I think a well thought through um, Christian theological ethic probably draws on, on each of these approaches in, in various ways.